All right, we have several names to talk about here. Leo Rush. Okay, so um, AW is going to be, you know, a lot of contracts are coming due between now and the middle of the year. And, uh, you know, they've added, been adding and adding and adding and adding people without subtracting. And the roster is bloated, and we've said it over and over again. And they are going to be subtracting. There's going to be a lot of people um, not renewed. Um, and Leo Rush and Peter Avalon are like the first two. They were this week. Um, Leo Rush, his deal is up on February 14th, I believe. But they've already pretty much... You know, he's already said, you know, I think they've already agreed that, uh, you know, both sides have agreed, you know, that, I mean, it's not like they're negotiating or anything like that. It's done, you know, and obviously he had what he had to say. And uh, did he sign like a three month deal? It must have been because they're, um, yeah, I mean, that's when the contract's up because, I mean, like. The rule of thumb is is that uh, Tony Khan will, if he signs you for three years, you're there for three years, and if he, you know, because there's guys that he's not using at all that he could cut, you know, like if like in WWE would cut, but um, you know that uh, he basically said like you know, I mean like the, you know there might be discipline reasons. Leo Rush could be a discipline reason as well. I mean, as far as like what the deal is, I mean he. Um, you know, obviously, Leo Rush, it's not a talent situation. Leo Rush is a talented guy, but, um, you know, they, he didn't seem happy to be there and they didn't, uh, you know, whatever. He's not being renewed. He's going to be a free agent. Um, Peter Avalon, his deal is up. He's also a free agent. I mean, he's, he's not being renewed. Um, and it's just one of those, you know, they're going to be cutting people like that. Um, there'll be others. So the, the one that's been a lot in social media in the last couple hours is Joey Janela. And, um, you know, it's because he's in an argument with, um, Jared St. Laurent of MLW. And, um, it started, you know, when it started with the lawsuit story. You know, when the lawsuit story broke with MLW um, suing WWE, Joey Janela jumped in with, uh, you know, oh, I, whatever, you know, whatever. He was ripping on MLW for holding guys to contracts that pay like nothing. Um, and Jared St. Laurent said that like, well, those are old contracts and, you know, that's not what we have now. And, uh, Joey Janela claimed that there was a, a guy he knows that's under a contract that for it's under a three year deal and the total money guaranteed for the three years is fourteen thousand dollars. So he's basically saying and then you, you know, guys have the opportunity to go elsewhere and they're not let out of their contract. And, um, you know, that's uh, that's true. You know, I mean, for you know, I mean, we've we've seen this with impact and we've seen it with MLW that um guys sign long deals um not necessarily long deals but they sign deals and then they'll, then they get an offer from somebody else which in theory is tampering but WWE you know doesn't care and that's one of the reasons maybe that's part of the lawsuit who knows you know that that will come out but obviously you know somebody has to make an offer to them while they're under contract, which is tampering with a contracted guy. Um, and it is routine, but it's, you know, so, um, I mean, that's the, the big thing with Killer Cross and Scarlet in, in Impact. So, um, anyway, the, the thing is, he's, you know, Janelle is going like, you know, these guys have a chance to make $100,000 a year and you're holding them their contracts. And one of the reasons you, the only reason, the only reason wrestlers are signed to contracts is so you can plan out storylines with them for a long period of time because they are under contract because if not there's no point in having them under a contract if it's not to guarantee you the ability to plan out long-term stories with them or having the knowledge that you're going to have them for a certain length of time um there have been you know like everyone in lucha underground got screwed by the contract it was horrible um 
but that's like you know i don't know just if you think if you think that you have potential to go um don't sign a long-term contract with somebody else to go to wwe or AEW. um but anyway that's not whatever so it's funny with with, with um they went back and forth so jared st laurent said that uh janella was looking his contract is up in may i know and i don't know the date of janelle's contract but i do know it's up in the next couple months um he said it's up in may and that he was looking at leaving AEW to go to wwe because gabe supposedly could get him in and but gabe is out so now he's got nowhere to go and he's probably getting cut i don't know if he's getting cut or not um time will tell the guys like if it's a guy whose contract is up and he's not on tv anymore um or being used they will probably be let go as far as like joey janela is on um the syndicated show i mean the um streaming shows he had a feud with sunny kiss um i don't know what his situation is you know it's like it depends on how significantly they want to cut people but um that is what you know he said and then they're still going they're still going back and forth later after that too with more stuff back you know so um that's that that's that deal but yeah they're going to be um there'll be other people cut um going forward for that uh that basic situation what's up with the brian cage besides his match with osprey tonight he had from I I can't wait to watch it, but I heard he had a fantastic match with Osprey. I've had people, many people, tell me just raving about the match. Like some saying it's the best live match I've ever seen. That it's just like this incredible, incredible match. But you know, it's Will Osprey. I mean, Will Osprey's just uh, he he has incredible matches almost every night out. It's just the deal. Um, but as far as how he goes. Um, he's not being used. I don't know when his contract is up. He he would have signed. See, I don't know the length. If he'd signed, because because he signed his deal. I'm trying to remember this. Wasn't it like he he did de- he didn't he he signed like in early 2020, and then he debuted in the. Um, it was like July or something at Fight for yeah, the but, Fallen but he, or something. Okay, so. His contract expired with impact, and then they signed him to bring him in as a surprise. And before he got brought in as a surprise, he tore his bicep. So he was under contract for like six months while injured before he, well, he was rehabbing, and then he won the um, the Battle Royal. And then got January the 12, 2020, it was announced he had signed. But he did not debut until May 23rd. Yeah. So if he has an 18-month deal... Um, that would be the summer. But anyway, Brian Cage isn't being used. So, I mean, he hasn't been used in a long, long time, and he's, and he's not injured. He's working indies, and he hasn't been used. So I would say that unless you start seeing him on TV, I would think it's a pretty good shot that when his contract is up, he's going to be used. And um, there's a situation... Um, you know, I mean, his wife complained that he wasn't being used well. And quite frankly, you know what? I think most people's wives, you know, that's not unusual. They usually don't go to social media. But, you know, and then, again, like, I think most guys who think that they're good probably think they're not being, you know, they should be used more. Um, Because if you think you're good, you should want to think that. I mean, that's not unusual. But I guess because it went out the way it did, and then there's things that happened afterwards i think there was like a there was a stalemate of some sort between the sides and um yeah i mean he just stopped being used so i guess that they're you know that's that's the deal hey if you're a big fan of wrestling observer radio we got twelve thousand episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website wrestlingobserver.com if you sign up today you get access to every single one of them The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.